Welcome back to a new section where we steer our attention to ES6 and React components. In the process, we're going to get to know more about ES6 and how to work with it, and we're going to build out React components. They'll be more reusable, we'll show you strategies to create really great components, and we'll have a lot of React. So let's jump right into our first lecture, because in our first lecture, we're going to be creating our first ES6 React component. Through it, you're going to learn about the ES6 classes, and you're going to learn how to import and export modules in Node.js. Technically, that's the platform that we're working with, but how you do that, generally speaking, working with ES6 projects. And also, we'll learn a lot more about JSX. Let's jump right into doing that. Now, one of the critical things, we've created a component, right? And it's inside of our client JS. It's a React component that leverages Bootstrap. But the problem with our component right now is implied by its name, which is client.js. In reality, a lot of the code here, mainly I'm talking about the component itself, really shouldn't live within the client. Now, the reason is it really implies to this bigger picture idea in programming in JavaScript, which is called isomorphic JavaScript. Now, this term is a little bit scary, but all it really implies is that you really want to create your code, and I'm creating a file in the process, and I'm just going to call it app.js. And the idea itself is you want to basically create the most minimal code that you can in each file. But beyond that, also, for example, in the scenario of client, we only want client specific things inside of this folder. While this app could have been generated also on the server if we were using, instead of React DOM, a different rendering, or it might have been rendered even in a mobile device. So really the first idea is to extract out the actual component itself or the logic within into a main application file. Now we're going to do that throughout this lecture and our first step that we need to do to be able to do that is actually create a class in ES6. Now we could have done it in different ways, but because we're doing a whole ES6 title about React, the process is very similar. We just type the word class. We define a name for that class. In our case, I want it to be our app. I am then gonna open and close a curly bracket to define our class. And next, I will wanna actually create the different methods of this class. Now, before I even do that, I'm gonna want to load up the actual React library because I want this class to be a child of a React component. To do that, I'm going to type app extends and type react.component. Now, the component is basically the base class for all components. And what I'm actually telling my app that it is a component, it's extending that component's features. Last but not least, to be able to run a React application, I also need to create the render function. And the render function inside of the class literally spells out what should be rendered. Now, the most basic construct I'll just return and then go inside of here. I'm just going to copy that value that we've created and I'm just going to cut it out of our client and put it right inside there as our value. Now, what I've done here is I created a minimalistic, very basic React component. Now, because it's ES6, it's going to automatically turn this all into, uh, you could say, information that will be transcribed down until it turns into an actual JavaScript. Now, for this to be able to work, I also need to send this to our application. Now, in ES6, very similar to the way we saw with Webpack, where we exported our module, this is how it's done in Node. In ES6, the way we announce to the world that this is content that we want to export is by using the word export. Now there's a few different ways to export things and multiple items can be exported. Because in our case we only have one class, we also need to add the words default. By adding the words default to our export before our class, what we're actually saying whenever someone tries to load up this file, send them this class by default. And in other words, whenever we create an import, for example for React, it will automatically send the React class that's living within this package, even though this package has multiple libraries and multiple elements beyond that. So I'm going to go ahead and save this change, and I'm going to go into my client, and what I want to do in my client, I'm going to go ahead and click on import, and I'm going to import our app from the current folder that we're in, app. 
Now I don't have to type .js because it will automatically search for the .js. Contrary to the top here where I didn't set the folder because really I didn't want it in the folder, I wanted it to look through in the node modules packages because it's one of those packages. In the case of our first source file that is externalized, we're actually approaching a local file, in this case our app file. And now once we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to create a new const here because instead of that, I'm just going to go ahead and create that component directly inside an HTML tag that is self-enclosed. Now, the beauty here in React is JSX more accurately. Whenever I type inside, for example, a div, it will not search for a class. It will automatically know that it's an HTML element that I'm trying to recreate. But if I go ahead and enter here an uppercase, it's going to expect to find a class with the name of div. In our situation, we have here a class and deliberately we set it with an uppercase letter. So React or the JSX transcriber will automatically recognize that what I want to put inside here is not actually HTML, but instead of that, I want to actually approach a class. So it's going to go and instantiate that class and put it inside of here. Really clean code. So if I go ahead and save this and make sure that I saved my app as well, if everything worked according to plan, when we go into our browser, we really shouldn't see anything change. Our content should remain the same. But the big difference that happened between what was before and now is our client is much smarter because it does not know the inner details of what is actually in the application. And if I have a rendering that is done on the server that uses the same client, I could literally call that app with a separate file such as server.js and run a different logic for the actual rendering process. So I've separated now between the actual logic flow of our application, our React application, and at our client itself. In this lecture, we learned how to create ES6 components and also learned how to learn more about JSX and how to import and export modules.